Hey YouTube, this is Nash Taters. Welcome back to another episode of War of the Visions. Today is Happy Wednesday, and it's actually not that happy because, well, we didn't get a whole lot of stuff. And I will show you that in a little bit here. But nevertheless, you should always treat every day as a happy day because, well, life is happy. Now before I begin today's video, I want to do a little house cleaning. First off, I want to thank everybody for continuing support of the channel. And we just hit 800, so uh, we're going to keep going and we're going to try to hit that 1000. So if you are brand new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy my content. Last video I made was comparing the Platinum Mace versus the Healing Mace. One thing I didn't really actually look up was exactly what the maximum you can gain from the Healing Mace in terms of magical attack power. And that is actually around 150. The Platinum Mace is actually around 180. But after chatting with the community, my guild, and just people in general, people have come to realize that the Platinum Mace is very hard to maximize. Therefore, the 30 magical difference may not that be a big deal, especially given the fact that 99.9% .9 of us who did not actually get a copy of Platinum Mace maxed out to 180 perhaps should be relying on the Healing Mace in terms of magical power. My two tries that I've done on the Platinum Mace, I've only gotten it to around 150. So given that, hammers are not easy to get, plus seals are not easy to get. It takes a lot of time. So having to do multiple retries, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Sticking with a maybe 150 or 160 Platinum Mace probably is good enough. If you're one of those lucky few who have gotten it to probably maximized Platinum Mace, well good for you, right? Because seems like it's also very rare. The Healing Mace also gives you additional access to the skill Curata. So again, in my honest opinion, since it's only designed for arithmeticians and clerics, that may be a moot point altogether. But generally speaking, I think Healing Mace is the way to go. Another thing I really want to do for this week, or perhaps even next week, is some of my favorite things, or perhaps some of my worst things, in War of the Visions. I generally speaking would really like to do a video showcasing the worst unit showcased in year 2020, maybe the worst equipment, the worst vision card, or maybe the best unit, best equipment, best vision card, etc, etc. If you guys have any suggestions, please come to my Discord and put some of those suggestions in there. Or you can simply put in the comments section below. For this video, let's go ahead and start off with the rest of the summons for this week. I believe we have one more day of free summons. But I don't think it's really worth doing a whole new video on. So let's go ahead and just use up whatever I have. Again, nothing anything specific I'm looking for anymore. Because right now, I think I'm at the point where none of this really matters. Until we figure out exactly what we're going to be doing with EX Shop 25. And I think at which point we can actually start worrying about which unit to start maximizing again. One thing I'm really leaning on in terms of my free-to-play account is start working on more of the MR characters because I think my goal is to try to get a tank for every element. That's something I probably should have done years ago. Well, not years ago, months ago, right? But I think going forward, most of the maps, you can get away with tanks of any element. But in the future, if they're asking us to do more content in which you were required to have a full team, of a specific element, then that's gonna be pretty tough on a lot of us, for those, especially those of us who, who have not built any tanks for those elements. I believe I looked up the Shiva this morning, and it does actually require you to see if you can beat, well, not Shiva, I'm sorry, the brutal challenges, the brutal part of the, the new healing mace stages, you know how they're giving us a new sus Sasuke Blade and the Rasgathi, Elgathi, oh my god, these names are so hard to pronounce. The Gut, and of course, the Healing Mace, right? They have the Brutal ones, the Brutal versions, and two of them ask you to bring an entire team of the same element, and you can get some bonus materials from that. So, I think it's a good time right now to start thinking about building a tank for every element. So it looks like we're going to be getting a, my bet is going to be Mediana because that's generally speaking what the game has been giving me quite a bit. 
And again, I'm okay with it. By the way, I did get an update on the Japanese server. You do only get 150 shards of limited units if you use the Soul Metal Exchange. So building too many, perhaps, you know, wouldn't be necessary per se. But I will be updated because we're going to be reaching another month very soon here. And this person is going to be updating me if that specific thing resets itself. So if it is a monthly 150, that's actually pretty good because in about roughly three months, you should get one unit up to level 120, even if they're a collaboration unit. And his name is the same name as the hammer from Thor, which I don't really care to pronounce. So thank you. You know who you are. I appreciate it. You are the hammer of Thor. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we got? Who is this? Oh, <laughs> I got a Skahal. Looks like they just want to give me Skahal. Because I think now I got Skahal on my free-to-play, my main, and my fiance told me that she got one as well. So Skahal is the definite giveaway this year. 2020 giveaway unit. So let's talk about what are some new changes here. Nothing in the mock shop. Like literally nothing. No changes. But in the normal shop, we get this New Year's. Oh, lots of gold here. So New Year greeting shop. We got a large energy restore potion for free. We have 10 skip tickets for 100,000 gold. So those are really, really good deals, obviously. And let's skip down a little bit here. Skip, 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 skip. I have not been able to use these overlights. I probably should because I'm really hurting for some JPs. Definitely buy these eggs, because I'm really like running out of eggs. You know what? I'm just going to buy them all now here. Boom. Done. Need more eggs. Need, need more eggs. And as always, today's water day. Now, one thing I actually will highly suggest people do is, since Tomberry is such a good card, because unless you have a Fenrir maxed, which most of us probably don't, but if you don't have a max, and you don't plan to summon on Tomberry, because I don't actually recommend summoning on this specific banner just for Tongberry. I suggest just buy all the shards, right? Banners, buy as many as you can. So when you do get a copy of Tongberry, you can just maximize it. Because it is a very good investment in terms of having an MR card that give you magical resistance. So let's go ahead and take a look at the summoning banner. Because there's really uh, nothing else going on besides the Shiva challenge. Which I will probably talk about that tomorrow. Because I do want to talk about the the armor that you obtain from there because I don't actually think it's all that great but and I'll give you reasons why okay so obviously you have the ability to just straight up summon on this banner you get the pity and you have the chance to get these two new cards or you can just do the five steps right they offer two five steps and both of these have no limits so if you really feel like spending hundreds of thousands of gems go for it but essentially, you have a chance to get Tom Barry on both, and of course, you're guaranteed either one of these cards. As I mentioned before on Monday, I'm not really a huge fan of these two cards. I don't think they offer anything special, and therefore, for me, they're easy skips. And of course, they keep bringing these New Year's 5-step to next summons. I no longer think these are good deals, even at a discounted rate, because I would much rather spend that gems instead of gambling away. 1,000 gems can get you 20 shards of a UR unit or, you know, obviously some UR vision cards. Shards. This, obviously, for me, is always the best deal. 100 select UR vision card ticket. It's always the best combination in an entire game, in my honest opinion. And, of course, you're always guaranteed one of these lovely, lovely cards as a prize. So, I will quickly update you on what's going on on my vision cards. As you can see, I did decide to spend my tickets to get my Fenrir maxed. Since I figured since Tomberry is out, I don't need Tomberry at all. And I will gladly go ahead and use my Fenrir. And of course, I still have the opportunity to go ahead and awaken this as soon as I get more of these rainbows. Which I should very soon. And I'll show you why. Now, obviously, I have three now maxed out UR cards. And I feel like still a little bit behind the curve with some of the heavy spenders in this game, but I'm okay with it because honestly, I realized in terms of using maximized vision cards, realistically speaking, they give you the most bang for your buck 
in terms of Guild Wars. Let's go ahead and show you a really good deal for those of you who are light spenders. This is probably one of the better deals in the entire game that's currently going on. And that is in the daily purchase bonuses. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight Rainbow Spheres plus these Global Festival Metal A's. Now these are a really good deal because you will get 70 for seven bucks. You spent seven dollars to get a bunch of, you know, pay gems, right? So it'd be like, what, 60 times seven? So that's 420. And then of course you will also get some, I personally spend $1 a lot of times just to buy some extra large potions. And of course you also get two rainbow rocks, rainbow fragments of thoughts if you want to call those. I started these channel by calling them rainbow rocks because that's what they look like to me. Now, 70, 70 tokens can get you a lot of nice stuff, right? Now a lot of you probably want to buy or tempted to buy unit shards but my personal suggestion is skip the unit shards ignore these unless perhaps you just need a few to finish off your stern or your gilgamesh other than that highly highly recommend spending it on your vision cards because getting these shards are going to be very good for your account right very very good personally another thing i've learned recently is that you want to spend shards on the ones that are going to be really really good in terms of maximizing them and what i mean by that is maximize the ones that have the highest cost in terms of utilizing them in your soul metal exchange so obviously you can just simply take a look it costs 10 soul metals to get one shard if you're to exchange it but some of these cards are actually only five soul metals for a shard so idealistically speaking, what you want to do is buy the vision card shards of the ones that are more expensive. As soon as you get all of these maxed out from ways other than rely on the soul metal exchange, then in the future, when you get many, many vision cards maxed out like I'm trying to do, then all the extras, you can convert them into these other really good cards that typically I do not recommend spending your like for example the selector ticket on right originally i really want to max out trousseau but i realized it's better actually to max out something else for example either my finier or ramu and then of course all the additional shards is much cheaper exchange rate for me to try to get trousseau maxed or say dashing over the snow or this card which turns out to be a super good card that i have a high regret of not actually maximizing Florence first division new year's greetings very easy all you gotta do is just bring any unit in there, boom, you get a bunch of free stuff. Magic Sites is still continuation, and of course, Shiva's Challenge. So far, I did the regular one. It doesn't look very challenging to me, and so for me, I feel like it shouldn't be that hard. It does have a lot of, like, what's it called? Spell Blades, so they can be very tanky, but Shiva herself doesn't have a lot of hit points, so she should be easy to kill. All right, I think that's all the time I have for this video. I want to thank y'all for watching. Until next time, take care of yourself and all your family and your loved ones. Remember, New Year's is coming up. I will still be streaming on Friday evening, even though it's a brand new year. So officially speaking, that'll be my first stream of the year. I will see you guys then. Take care of yourself. Nash Taters family out of here. Peace.